Hey everyone, welcome to the Monday Night Live stream. As always, I have with me Thrash Pondo Pons. He's going to be my official reader of the questions tonight. And we just did a uh, a podcast with the Kung Fu Santa here, Mr. Rick Myers. Uh, and he is an extraordinary wealth of information when it comes to not just martial arts, but martial arts movies, action movies in general. And we had just an amazing conversation. And I wanted to open it up to you guys to ask, to have you guys ask the questions that you enjoy asking about martial arts. You actually do um, a, a podcast yourself. So tell us a little bit about your podcast. Well, uh, I got into uh, martial art movies, then Kung Fu films through my love of action films. My first adult movie that I ever saw. Well, even when I was going to childhood matinees, it was always Tarzan and Flash Gordon and all this stuff. And I loved heroes and I loved action. Mm. And the first adult movie I ever saw in 1963 was Dr. No. And that replaced the uh, the uh, Saturday matinees. They just showed Dr. No. And I went, <laughs> and, I became, and so when I was growing also with television, all the television detectives, I, won, I wrote an award-winning book on television detectives before I wrote. So I wrote books on science fiction films, on fantasy films, on television detectives before I discovered Kung Fu films and martial art movies in 1978. Even though I had seen uh, Enter the Dragon in 19, uh, 1973, mm -hmm. uh, it, didn't, it didn't speak to me the same way James Bond and the others did. Oh, I see. So now my podcast, when I decided to do a podcast a, a, a couple of years ago, uh, it's called Action Film Autopsy, and it's at actionfilmautopsy.com. So I watch all the action movies, whatever genre it's in. You know, I love animation because the action is usually the best in animation because mm. you control your fighter. Right, right. Movies, the fighter, the fighter is only as good. <laughs> Remember the Netflix Iron Fist series. The fighter is only as good as the actor doing it. So. When you have Jackie Chan and you have Bruce Lee and you have Jet Li, who are like the Fred Astaire and the Gene Kelly of, of uh, fighting films, then you've got great work. But you also have a lot of people who are not as good. Yeah, for sure. Well, hang on one second. We've got we to acknowledge some people in the channel today. We've got some hellos here. Ah, oh, Lance Sheffin. Uh, hi, Thrash and Rick, and hello to you too, Lance. Hello, Lance. Nice thank to have you, you with you us. My name right. I thank you for that. <laughs> yes. Well, I made sure that in our comments that in, in everything I did, I made sure I spelled your name right. It's no, nothing worse than spelling your name, spelling somebody's name wrong. You know, it's, it's okay. I, can, I always tell them leave the K off for karma and kung fu. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Ah, Tracy Rock Myers. Hey, Hi guys. you spell your oh. name wrong. It what? Should, <laughs> should have an extra E in Myers. You're not a relative of mine. What uh, I, oh, I see. Myers and Myers, Rick Myers and yeah, Tracy Roth Myers. Yes, I get it. I get it. She didn't get uh, mired down with too many E's. I think oh, he's oh. Probably relate, we're probably related. Oh, Thrash oh, Pondo, I, you got to stop, man. You're killing me. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even need to use your fist. <laughs> oh, Tracy Roth Myers again. Mr. Kung Fu, that's an impressive resume or resume, if you will. Resume. <laughs> I, I love doing that. <laughs> and yes, you do have an impressive resume. And uh, my sure favorite, do. Yeah. Yeah, and he's, he's got a, my all... Kung Fu and martial art film books, but also some of the DVDs. I have like 300 DVDs I contributed to. Oh, all wow. Of... Wow. Wow. Okay, I think we have our first question here. Uh, hey, John Collins, welcome to the show. Hi, welcome, Mr. John. Hi, Mr. Myers. Your interview with Ian was so informative. Do you think there are any way to many internet discussions about who would win in actual fights because martial arts movies are movies? Yeah. Well, there's two, you know, in today's world with three, with three billion people, there's always too much everything. So it's okay, but there are three billion people. So my attitude is that each one of those people who is, wants something, that's fine. I have my choice of getting involved in the discussion if I want to. Yeah. And I always like, you know, bringing in context. 
because yeah, basically it is a stupid, it is a stupid argument because you never know. Well, wait a minute. Are you saying that 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 the the argument of whether or not Shazam would beat Superman is a dumb argument? Yeah, of course it's a dumb argument. <laughs> I never, I never like to ask myself questions I can't answer. So I yeah. don't. I always have to ask myself questions that I can't answer. Right. What I say is, again, I'm an and person, not an or person. Mm -hmm. So I usually say, well, depending on the circumstances, because we learn in, in my, the Kung Fu I learned, all fighting depends on the individual, the environment, and the situation. So if you place two fighters in a, in a null zone with no complications, with no weather, and they're all the same age or whatever, then you might be able to judge on the basis of their skill level. But for the most part, you can't make that call until it actually happens. Mm. If somebody attacks me. I don't know how I'm going to react until they attack. Right. Because I'm not, I haven't learned to block and do stupid things and I'm not doing, I, I, I saw this, I recently saw, I'm going to be talking about it this weekend. I'm going to be dropping my latest episode of Action Film Autopsy. And I'll be talking about Star Wars Visions on Disney+. Plus. Again, wonderful animation. Also, the new uh, episode of What If with Thor versus Captain Marvel. Mm. Beautiful animation, beautiful fighting, lots of details. I have, a, I have a, uh, a set of rules for enjoying fight scenes. If I can watch it more than once and find more things every time I watch it, good fight scene. Also, it's a great fight scene is... If you cannot take it out of the story without affecting the story, most fight scenes I see nowadays, you can take it out of the movie or television show without any effect on the, on the yeah. show. That's right. not a good fight scene for me. No. So again, just, and in real fights are different too. Yeah. yeah. Like Top Gun, of course it does. Great <laughs> <laughs> oh, in the house. I love like really Top Count. Yeah. That's the great thing about, um, Star Wars Visions, because the Star Wars series was based on Japanese martial arts, not on Chinese Kung Fu. So I can judge the Star Wars series on a Japanese martial arts level. Mm -hmm. So anything that the Japanese do, for the most part, when their martial arts were created way back when, it was all skill-based. They're all basing it on talent. You know, that was what was so incredible about the Lone Wolf and Cub. Ogami Ito, the uh, um, uh, baby card series, in that because he was disgraced, he was willing to do things other samurai would never do because mm. every samurai was trying to get into heaven. That's the thing that, into the afterlife, that's they had to follow Bushido, their, their code of honor, or they wouldn't get into heaven. So, that, so when they fight, it's a matter of checking out each other's talent, not so much as winning. Mm. But, Tommy Ito got involved. All he wanted to do was win. So he yeah. would the other samurais because he'd pick up a sword and he'd throw it. Right, right. No Whatever, it Whatever it takes to win. Whatever it takes to win, right? Whatever it takes to win for him. For him. Yeah, but everybody else, and again, the, the swords, I love, there's a movie called Heroes of the East by my favorite Kung Fu filmmaker, La Kao Young, which has Gordon Liu versus a real Japanese martial artist comparing mm. and contrasting Japanese with Chinese martial arts. So it all depends, as I always say, it all depends on your teacher. You know as much as your teacher taught you, unless you're like Poe the Panda from Kung Fu Panda, where you figure it out. You take what the teacher take, gives you, and then you develop it from there using your own brain. Here I have it. a I have a favorite uh, a, f a favorite quote from one of my uh, one of well, not, not my instructor, but a guy I look up to. And he was often, he was an original Bruce Lee student, and he was often asked, what, um, uh, did you learn that from Bruce Lee? And he would say, no, I learned it because of Bruce Lee. Exactly. And that is one of my favorite quotes. That's People great... often ask me too, when I teach JKD, they say, oh, did you learn this from your teacher? No, I said, I learned this because of my teacher. Right. I learned this because of, of what I've learned from him. Or I do this because of what I learned from him. It all depends. Uh, because there are many things I've learned specifically from teachers. And I'll say I learned this from. Right, the, right, uh, yeah. Song, but there's other things that I've extrapolated as I develop my own Kung Fu, Rick Fu. <laughs> Rick, Fu. Rick Fu. Right on. Because yes. ultimately I did learn everything from Bruce because Bruce said, 
learn everything you can from everyone and everything you can, then make it your own. Yeah. It wasn't until I made it my own and studied all martial arts and all Kung Fu and realized that all martial arts and all Kung Fu and all of life, in fact, is the human body, the human mind, and the world around it. The rest is money and ego. When I realized that, then all bets were off, man. Now, right. Lance asks... Oh, let, let, let's let Thrash read it. He's, he's our reader. Come on, yeah, let him read it. Yeah. Right. Come on buddy. Yeah. Hey, Rick, what do you think about the 90s martial arts movies? Well, that's kind of me like saying, Rick, what did you think of the 90s? Because it's like, I want you to go on to Google now. I can go on to Google and ask how many martial art Ooh. movies were there in the 90s. It's just like everything else. There were really lousy ones. There were some good ones. There were some very good ones. And there were a few excellent ones. Mm. Let me put it this way, Lance. I really love the excellent ones. The very, <laughs> good ones the very good ones I liked. Really? The okay ones I thought were okay. <laughs> and the bad ones I did not. Spoken like a true Zen Buddhist priest. I had no, a. Uh, I'm no. just telling you the truth. I know. I get it. I get it. I really do. I was playing a game of uh, of um, a trivial pursuit one time with some relatives, and I said, "Oh, these questions are easy." And uh, they were because they were just given a string of easy ones. Right. And my uh, older brother in law came in and he said, "They're all easy if you know the answers." Right. Well, <laughs> I was well, like, uh, "It's like dropping truth Lance, right on us, man." <laughs> Lance, I got a question for you. What did you think of the 90s martial art movies? And can you name two or three ones that you thought were really great? And I could react to specific movies. Right. And we can compare right. that on that stuff. I like the 1060s, 1960s. What's the 1060s? No, I think she meant 1960s. Oh, okay. oh 1960s, 70s martial art movies. But again, Tracy, you have to be more specific because there were hundreds, hundreds of them. I should know. I write about all of them. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Yeah. So I liked. I'm. I'm. Well, she. In she my, furthers this down here. Uh, Chris of Myers. Or Sam how about Samurai Deli? All right. My favorite samurai film of all time is the fifth movie in the Baby Cart series, Baby Cart in the Land of Demons. That to me is the best samurai movie I've ever seen. Of course, mm -hmm. I like Sanjiro. I love Yojimbo. I love Sa Seven Samurai. But there's, those are very arty. I'm into action, not just art. So Baby Card in the Land of Demons, I think, is primary viewing for anybody who likes samurai films. Mm -hmm. In terms of the other Japanese action films, like you know, what you want to try to find is the uncut Japanese ones. I would recommend a website called SamuraiDVD.com where my buddy Merlin David remasters subtitles, full screen, new subtitles that he creates for all the great Japanese movie. He has dozens, if not hundreds, of Japanese karate films and samurai films that most people have probably never even heard of. Mm. And, and he will judge them honestly. He's had all the hoodlum priest movies, all, all just awesome stuff. It's stuff we don't know about here in America. And we only got, for the most part, crap. Mm. Because the distri American distributors would figured that oh. Americans were stupid because they took all these Bruce Lee knockoffs. And they said, well, if they like that, if they like that junk, they'll like anything. And so that's so they just started got the getting the Bruce Lie and the Bruce. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which were fun, no question. But there were also a bunch of other movies that were far superior. Same thing with the Japanese stuff. I mean, and also they would edit it to hell. They would take they would take this terrible dubbing on on all the uh, executioner movies, all the Sonny Chiba movies, all the ninja movies. All had terrible dubbing. They were all full screen. They were scratchy. Not only terrible dubbing, but terrible translations. Mm. You know, um, I'm trying to think. There's a couple of really amazing examples where they reduce some brilliant concepts down to. Right. <laughs> Those are great I, ones. Something amazing. Jim Cotta. <laughs> Lance, if you think that's a great movie. Oh, I think, uh, you, I, you, come on, man, Jim Cotta. That's that's a great, uh, let, let me say this. It's, that's For me, that's one of those so bad it's good. Well, I, that's, 
That's accurate. Yeah. But I don't confuse. I have a book over here. Oh, we lost him. Uh, I have a book yeah. over here called Great Martial Art Movies. And I wouldn't uh -huh. let Van Damme on the cover because I said he's made good ones. He's never made great ones. So he can't be on the cover. And oh. the same thing here. Jim Cotta, so bad it's good. Absolutely accurate. Great? Mm -hmm. No. In no way, shape, or form is that good. No, it's so not great. It's good, but not great. It's not so bad it's great. It's so bad it's good. I I'm see. a writer. I choose my words. I got it. I that's that's a good one. That's a, a good one. Uh, and so you mentioned Van Dam, right? So you're yeah. saying he made good ones, but not great ones. Even even old Bloodsport, you didn't care for Bloodsport, huh? No, no. You see, there's the difference. I said he's never made great ones. He's made good ones, which means okay. I don't dislike his good ones. Okay. It, I mean, I dislike the really really bad ones. All right. Well, Blood what Sport was his best? Bloodsport was his best. I'd even call Bloodsport. Very good. Of course, it's complicated by the Frank Dux situation. Yeah. Hey, welcome back. I go in, I can go out, I go yeah. in, I can go and out. I can't usually separate uh, the filmmaker and the film creator from his behavior off screen. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm a wildly respectful of Steven Seagal's skill in Aikido. Yeah. But his behavior off screen which I'm in a position to know about because I talk to all these people, I interview all these people, I interview a lot of other people. So I know how they behave. And when they're terrible people, it affects the movie for them. I'm not going to say the movie's terrible. I believe Seagal has made really great movies. Yeah. And I, I would include him on the cover. I believe he's on one of my covers. But Van Damme, he's never quite made from, like I said, Bloodsport was very good. But not necessarily because of him. I mean, he does the split really well. <laughs> but I believe there's any number of actors who could have starred in Bloodsport and made it as good, if not better, film. Yeah. So, I could definitely uh, back yeah. that up. I think yeah, so, too. But I, I do. I was a, da a Van Damme fan. I thought, uh, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I get what you're saying. And it certainly is the case that there were people out there who are better but or could have made it better. But uh, I did enjoy Bloodsport. Yeah. It is ranks in one of my f favorite ones. And more than that, it was more personal to me because it came in at a time where I had kind of not been doing martial arts for a while. And it kind of filled in a lull for me and kind of inspired me to get back into martial art training. Yeah, so listen, if you love movies, more power to you. I'm not going to say you're wrong because yeah. it's your opinion. It's just that I only speak for myself. Right. Right. And of also, course. In the, and also keep in mind that I started discovering true Kung Fu films in 1978. And there were five movie theaters in New York's Chinatown that showed two new Hong Kong movies every week. So that was 12 altogether. So for months and years, I would see these genius martial art and Kung Fu films from China, from Japan, from Korea, from Hong Kong, from everywhere over the period where you guys were getting leftover gruel. Yeah. You were getting American crap. I was getting all this genius stuff, widescreen, subtitles, uh, perfect prints, not scratchy prints. So I was talk. I talked to other people in the seven, the sixties, the seventies, the eighties, the nineties, and they're going, "Oh man, you can't get a good action movie." And I said, "Well, you got to come join me down in Chinatown, man. Every single <laughs> week, you're going to see at least two classics that will blow your mind." And I have a list of them in the back of my Films of Fury book. Yeah, and I can, and also if you listen to, you can listen to all my opinions on all action films on my podcast. But yeah, so that's the difference. The difference is, I was, I was, I spelt my name wrong. Uh, I, said, <laughs> I, um, I was, I was getting gourmet food. Every yeah. Day, everybody else was getting McDonald's. Yeah. So just like in one of the books I wrote, uh, wrote for in the Destroyer series, in the seventh book in the Destroyer series, series, Remo Williams, also I didn't like that movie because I wrote the books. Um, he has a McDonald's hamburger in the seventh book as a reward for killing somebody properly, and he keels over poisoned. Ah. That's the way I feel about American 60s, 70s, and 80s action film for the most part. Yeah. I was yeah. having all this gourmet food. So that's mm -hmm. what my taste was. Anyway, what's what? Oh, we lost Lance again. 
And not Lance. Lost. Thrash Panda. Yeah. All right, let me read this. Mr. Meyer spelled wrong. How do people obtain autographed copies of your books? And what are your thoughts on the fight scene between the two co-stars in They Live? Oh, oh, there you go. You're back. I'm sorry. I read I read the uh, question already. I'm sorry. Thank you for your help. A, that's okay. okay. So here we go. I'll answer the questions. Um, I recently went through hell with somebody because he wanted an autographed copy of the book. What you do is you go to, you know, Kung Fu Rick Myers at gmail.com, spend it, spelling both Rick and Myers correctly. Kung Fu Rick Myers at gmail.com. You request an autographed copy. And, and uh, if you have a copy already, you can send it to me and I'll sign it. But the single most important thing is I should not have to do anything but get your mail, open the book, open your package, take out the book, autograph it to you. You should have a little note on how you want it to be autographed. But also in the book, in the package, should be a self-addressed stamped envelope. Accurately done. Yeah. The story that I've been trying to do for this wonderful fan of mine, where he sends me an envelope. He didn't send send me the self-addressed stamped envelope. So I said, I'm gonna I have to wait. I have to wait till you send it. He sent it. It was incorrectly stamped. I signed it, I sealed it, I gave it to the, uh, the uh, postman. He it was sent back to me. So now I am forced to go and risk getting COVID. So yeah, that's the deal. If you want it, if you don't have it, order it from Amazon. It's on Amazon. It's I think it's like for $7.99 at this point. It's not even full price. Yeah. Get a self-addressed stamped envelope. That's accurate. Tell me how you want me to sign it. Send it to me. Because I'll get you'll get your address if you go to my uh Kung Fu Rick Myers at gmail.com. And then you'll get it. And but all I need to do is put it in the envelope, put it in the mailbox, and run away. And then everything will be fine. Anything goes wrong, your fault. Nothing to do with me. <laughs> Try to help. All right, all right. Now they live. Oh, oh no, they live. They they live. I they forgot. Live. Yes, oh, we gotta oh, gotta do it. The day they live. Yes. I work. If you go if you go on the internet and you look up the WWF Attitude Super Bowl commercial, you will see me in the background. I am right behind Triple H. I've been oh. friends with the with WWE now and WWF. I worked for them for a while. I was wow. going to be writing novels for them for pocketbooks. I know everybody. So I loved the fight in They Live. I like I like it when two characters fight in character. Mm. And he is so great, you know, the hero in that. He's such a great wrestler and he's such a great actor. He always plays himself. And the guy he's fighting is playing himself. And you'll notice in most fights on television nowadays and many in films, everybody, no matter whether they're an old man or a young woman, fight exactly the same. You could, you yeah. could switch their heads without affecting the fight. In <laughs> They Live, man, that is a great fight because it's in character that they wouldn't be fighting smartly. I yeah. don't know when a character doesn't learn stuff. Jackie Chan movies taught me and Sammo Hung movies taught me that and also La Kal Young movies taught me that the character can learn crap mm. and get better. Yeah. I love it when the character gets better. Well, that but fighting in character thing, I, I, you know, one of the things that I liked about um, the ep episode two of Star Wars, even though the, uh, the even though the, the early Star Wars stuff, I, I, I love the original Star Wars and I like the one, two and three. But in episode two, there is a fight between Obi-Wan Kenobi and Jango Fett that is worth its weight in gold because it is a Mandalorian and a Jedi showing each their respective skills and why they are such forces to be reckoned with. And it's two different styles of fighting. It's just right. two different styles. Yep. Before we go on to our questions, I'm sorry, everybody, I'm going to preempt this because I need to ask oh. you a couple of questions uh, oh, that I... You want to take questions? Uh, I, I well, there are more, yeah. But that's yeah, oh, there, there are tons more. They're coming in. But I need to. I want to know real quickly uh, about two films. Yeah. What did What did you think of Best of the Best? Yep. What What did you think of Best of the Best? And it, did you? Because that was one of those films that I actually thought was a good film, as well as having good martial arts in it. I agree. Um, okay. But again, uh, 
but I, but again, since I studied all martial arts and I'm, I studied Kung Fu and I learned Kung Fu and I teach Kung Fu now, it always, it all, it always makes me do this. Whenever, whenever someone wants to prove how badass they are, whenever someone wants to prove how tough they are, and that's their ultimate goal. Uh -huh. their ultimate goal is to show themselves because really that's all they're doing. They're trying to prove to themselves how tough they are and how badass they are. And virtually all martial arts that's taught in America is is basically that's the foundation for most of it. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm badass, I'm tough. You know, and we learned the first thing I learned in elevated true kung fu is this is the stupidest thing you can do. There is no way you can use this without hurting yourself. There's no way yeah. you can be better at hurting yourself than, than a lot of people. But still, so the fact that it's all anger, muscle, and fist based, I'm sitting, again, I'm sitting at home like the gourmet, like the gourmet eater, like the gourmet, and just going, mm. oh, look at those guys eating dead cow. You know, mm. I would much rather have a filet mignon, but okay, it's a good <laughs> dead cow they're doing. They're doing good dead cow. I mean, I even feel that way about Red Belt, where, you know, David Mamet, supposedly knew what he was talking about. But again, he made it, and this is David Mamet, so it's no surprise, he made it aggressive. If you look at the movie... Forget you. Yeah. Right. In other words, he, wasn't, he wasn't learning how to do this properly. He wasn't learning how to do self-defense. He wasn't learning how to improve himself. He was learning, how, again, how to, to be more badass. And it's like, yeah. I keep telling people, I'm not badass, I'm good ass. And I aspire to be great ass. <laughs> and a lot of people in the audience right now could be saying, you are a great ass, Rick. And I go, thank you. I know. But in any case, I love, I love Cynthia Rothrock. I've known Cynthia Rothrock for decades and decades and decades. We are very good friends. Cynthia yeah. Rothrock is awesome. Yeah. He can oh, do, I, do I agree more. with that. I agree. I love Cynthia Rothrock myself. Did you want to say something, Thrash Pondo? Yes. I mean, I have a question. I, there, something I heard years ago, and I wanted to confirm that you said as the person who would know. Uh, of course, American cinema was sort of late in the whole martial arts game. And a trivia question I heard years ago was supposedly Bad Day at Black Rock is the yeah. first time martial arts is actually used in American cinema. No. And would you even count that? But of course, I count that. In, you count, okay. all my books, in all of my books, I talk about America and how they started. I have full, whole mm -hmm. chapters on the American history. No, mm -hmm. uh, Bad Day at Black Rock has martial arts in it, absolutely, mm -hmm. no and has very mm -hmm. effective and very good one armed man martial yeah. arts. Excellent. But he's mm -hmm. far from the first. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. oh, yeah. I mean, one of the first, I believe the first major one was Blood on the Sun with James Cagney, who mm -hmm. you know was fighting a supposedly a Japanese general, but it was a white guy dressed up as a Japanese general, of course. But they were doing actual you know, Japanese martial arts. The other one I really, really liked was the Manchurian Candidate. Mm. Because, oh, yeah. yeah. Because Frank Sinatra knew karate in that. He broke a table. And but wasn't that later? I didn't do that. I went, awesome. Nice job. Frank Sinatra broke a table. Wasn't that like 1962 and Bad Day Black Rock was like 54, I want to say? Like that. And, but Blood on the Sun was back in the war period, was back in the 40s. Check. And James mm -hmm. Cagney was, was training, I believe, in judo at the time. Mm -hmm. But again, you're only as good as your teacher. And all martial arts teaching and all kung fu teaching is limited by what I call limited knowledge. You're only as good as your teacher. It's better to have a great Taekwondo teacher than a bad Tai Chi teacher. At its best, Tai Chi is, you know, almost the sum source, although Qigong is even better. But, um, and Taekwondo is a intrinsically flawed sport. But if you have a great teacher, a more knowledgeable teacher of Taekwondo and a really dumb, limited knowledge Tai Chi person, I prefer the Taekwondo guy, but I'm still not going to, I'm still going to learn from them, but not for very long. Mm. Because I keep moving. I don't go to one school. I go to everybody. I'm like Jackie Chan in that I want to be a sponge to everybody. I want to take a little bit of everybody. I like wow. Bruce Lee. I love Bruce Lee. Learn everything you can from everyone and everything you can. Then make it your own. Yes, there is no equal to Bruce Lee because he died. 
And there's also no equal to Bruce Lee because then everybody copied him. They didn't listen to what he taught. They just copied him. They didn't follow what he told them to do. As I often say, they life of brian him. Mm. So they just copied him. So Kung Fu has, action movies have never progressed. We're still doing roundhouse punches. We're still doing roundhouse punches. Mm-hmm. You know, the stuff started, you know, the beginning of cinema, we're still doing the same kind of fighting. And then Bruce Lee, all the executives, I tell you this story, I'm, I'm with Jackie, I'm with Jackie Chan at the New York Film Festival in 1988. He shows police story. I'm hanging out with him at this hotel. We go down to the elevator. There's an executive from a major studio who looks at Jackie and says, Americans will never accept a Chinese hero in an American film. And Jackie yeah, yeah. Jackie's producer, David, goes, what about Bruce Lee? And the studio executive, without blinking, because they do this all the time, he goes, oh, he was the exception. So (laughs) what studios did was rather than again, and you saw what Bruce's own studio did to Game of Death. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's it's awful. They disemboweled it. They had all Bruce's notes. They had 45 minutes of the film. They gutted it and they yeah. turned it into a flaming turd. <laughs> and that's and that's what we're following. That's what we're doing. I call again, I, th- I mentioned last time, most of the fans of the Bruce exploitation I call fan ghouls because they're dancing on Bruce's grave. That's all they're doing. They're dancing on his grave. Brandon could have pushed it, he died. And yeah. now Brad Allen, who just choreographed Sang Chi beautifully using all the highlights of Kung Fu movie history, he's died. I told you last time, if I suddenly die, we'll know it's a plot. We'll okay. know it's a plot by studios to keep action films from progressing. Although in Star Wars are doing a very nice job. Let's see here. Oh, it in. Anyone remember a rare movie with Katie Long called The Stranger? Yes, Kathy Long is great. I mean, one of my favorite Kathy Long movie was Above the Law with Cynthia Rothrock and Yun Biao. And uh, I know that movie, but it's not its not a great movie. She's always great. But the movie itself was not what it should have been, I think. Right. Ah, once again. Hey, Rick, show that with Billy Blaine's Bert, A Blood Fist with Don Wilson and Shana I. Bryan. Billy, Billy... Which, well, she meant China. He meant China O'Brien. Uh, yeah, that's a fun, fun movie. Those three guys are terrific. Even, you know, I even tolerated the martial arts kid, which was a knockoff of the Karate Kid, starring Don the Dragon and Cynthia Rothrock, because they were in it. And I know I remember both, that film. I remember yeah, that film well. I know them both very well. And so I, you know, as long as it's fun, but. Again, it's all of these things are knockoffs, ripoffs. Um, you're, you know, pale plagiarism upon play, pale plagiarism. But thankfully, I had all the Chinese right. stuff at that, so I could just go. Right. My well, somebody here is going to mention my uh, one of my favorite films, but uh, uh, I'd love to hear your opinion about it. It is one of those for me. It's so bad, it's good. Loved it at the time. Uh, let's see here. No Retreat, Go No ahead. Surrender was yes. also one of one of Van Damme's best. Cyborg was very good, or good. Yeah. Good to very good. They're both entertaining, decent films. And yeah. again, I liked No Retreat, No Surrender, especially because I think that's one of the few movies that Van Damme is in where his character suits him. Oh, really? Yes. Van Damme should play villains all the time. Okay. Um, because on the basis of my understanding and my and my experiences and other people's experiences with Jean Claude, he's not a very nice guy. Okay, well, and I, I think his the villain in No the guy he plays in No Retreat, No Surrender. I think it's his best performance ever. Yeah, because when he plays a hero, I never believe him. <laughs> mm, interesting. 
well, he's not a great actor, and I think he plays a better villain. I have to agree with you on that. I don't know too much about the guy personally. Of course, he hasn't been in the insulting kind of uh, spotlight as somebody like um, like uh, uh, Seagal has been. You know, I mean, Seagal's like everybody's got a bad story about that guy. You know, it's just one of those things you just listen to him. And uh, yes. Very good movies. He made better movies than he did. Oh, oh yes, yes. He, especially those first four are fantastic. And we were both on that uh, that Samurai Guy shows, uh, talking about his movies. And I think those first four were incredible. But uh, but but I have to say that thinking about those movies, um, Out for Justice was not my favorite. Hard to Kill was my favorite one of his. Actually, you was, know they're both they're both good. I yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't make a choice. Yeah, uh, usually on verses, especially on episodes like that, I used to used to, I like to say and rather than or. It's yeah, not, you know, because I I'd be happy to watch both those both those both of those again at any time. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Dan Staten, Universal Soldier was good. I liked it. I don't know if you liked it, Rick, or not, but yeah, like I said, it was good. Yeah. Yeah. with Myers again. When I watch kung fu movies with action scenes, I really see the choreography in them. It's actually quite beautiful. Thank takes a lot Thank of skill. That Thank takes you. a lot of skill, I think. Is what you yes, of course it does. But it yeah. it can be trained depending on on who's doing it. For instance, again, Sang Chi, Michelle Yeoh didn't know any kung fu before she mm -hmm. did her first movies, but she's a dancer. And most choreographers like dancers rather than martial artists in movies because they don't have to unteach them things because real fighting and movie fighting are completely different, as Bruce Lee could have told you. Yeah. Because the fighting Bruce Lee did in his movies was nothing like the ones he did on the street. And that's yeah. the thing I find hilarious all the time because when they're doing these Bruce Lee knockoff movies, they always show him like an Ip Man 4. They always show Bruce Lee fighting exactly the way he did on screen. And he did not fight in oh. real life the way he did on screen. Right, right. Yeah. Limited knowledge. Limited knowledge. Yeah, yeah. And I and I do know too that uh, Bruce was trying to, um, especially in Enter the Dragon, he was trying to show some of his philosophy of fighting, and so uh, he he did things that differently or exaggeratedly. So yeah. that you could see the philosophy rather than how he would move in real life. Well, that whole opening sequence that he he wrote and directed that yes. was film after it was finished, when he's talking to the to the monk when he's teaching the child, that's the highest form of that in that film. And of course, Game of Death and uh, Circle of Iron and his other movies, had they been made properly, would have also pushed that very hard and aggressively. Mm -hmm. But again, he died. His biggest mistake was dying. Yeah. And then, of course, all the producers came and took their revenge on him by turning it into trash. Well, they just wanted to, once you got uh, money coming in, I mean, you got to just keep that. They, these, a lot of these people, they just don't know how to control themselves. They just, if it's a hot property and they know people will watch it and they know people will buy it, it doesn't matter. They just turn it out. They especially, just really want that. Especially if the audience will take crap. Yes. The audience will take anything with ninja in the title. Why not? Give, why not? Why work hard? Same yeah. thing. Many slasher movies. I like that horror movies are changing now because better people are doing them. But for the most part, of course, the studio wants a captive audience who will eat anything they're fed. Yeah. And of course, they want that. But that's no excuse for Raymond Chow and Golden Harvest to have done that. <laughs> but that's okay. Well, I also understand that because the rumor is that Bruce did not treat Raymond Chow very well, so he was yeah. getting... Yeah, yeah. Um, and then one thing you mentioned, too, that I got to also mention on it as well is um, I have also heard from people that, that uh, chore choreographers like dancers better because dancers are more interested in just the movement and not whether or not they think it would work or whether or not it conflicts with previous training right. where with the fighter, we discussed that on our podcast. Yeah. A fighter basically is always going, well, I need to, you know, oh, well that wouldn't work or whatever, you know, well, so again, it's ego, it's yeah. ego. In other yeah. words, when you, when you're hired to be in a movie, you should be a part of that movie and listen to your director. But if you're going to go throwing your weight around, you know, let's hire a dancer. 
Yeah, for you know, sure. Uh, Denny Staten. Uh, Steven Se Seagal was better than Vaughn anyway. I was yeah, thinking Steven Seagal. Very true. Very true. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, my my contention is that Van Damme didn't know anything. He didn't know any martial arts. He said he won all these tournaments, but I don't see any real evidence of that. Seagal was an actual Aikido champion and a, mm -hmm. and a valid Aikido teacher. And so, yeah. There was a dust up between the two of them in the 90s. I don't know if you recall that. Oh, where, yeah. Uh, where... oh yeah. I got a call from the bar. Oh, you did? I got a call. Oh, well, tell, tell us. You got a feed. Please. Please tell us that story. <laughs> no, the, the guy who called me was laughing too hard to really give me a lot of details. Okay. Because Van Damme, Van Damme, when he gets a little tipsy or, you know, his ego gets in and he starts bragging and stuff like that. I mean, there are so many instances of him being beat up by people, including women. So really, like, yeah, because he's, he's not a very nice person. He's, you know, especially when he's a little tipsy, he will, uh, yeah. So. Oh, three, there was Myers. Wow. Mr. Myers. That's so cool. No, it's I'll not cool. It's terrible. It's <laughs> look, here's the deal. This is how you can get through life. Be nice. I'm Santa Claus. I'm Kung Fu Santa. So be nice. That way you can find out who else is nice. And the reason I keep getting work is not only because I know what I'm doing after all these years, but people like working with me. I'm not, mm -hmm. a, I'm not a Van Damme angle. I, I don't treat people poorly. I don't know if she was talking about that. I think maybe it was a little bit earlier that because that's kind of later in the chat. Let's see. That's all right. Everything I say is cool. So it's I do. I do have a question, a follow-up question. Yes. Was there not, wasn't there a similar sort of uh, kerfuffle between um, um, uh, uh, I'm drawing a blank here, uh, David Carradine and Chuck Norris when they no. worked together on that film? No, no. That's, that's a myth. No, they got along great. My still, my favorite. I knew David as well. We talked a lot. Uh, I was autographing my book with him, and he was autographing people's book. And people kept on showing what I said about him in my book. And so, you know, I could sort of like feel David's eyes on me, and I lean down, and I look over, and he's looking right back at me. And he said, you know, the stuff you said about me in the book? I said, yeah. He said, all true. <laughs> all true. <laughs> David Carradine, you know, killed people in car accidents. You know, he had a bad problem with drinking with drugs. Mm -hmm. And in fact, um, he he kind of saved Thailand. You know that story? No, he I don't. Please. Died in Thailand from, you know, uh, autoerotic asphyxiation. Yeah. That, I know that. That. And because, because he was famous and mm -hmm. the people who killed him, you know, the, 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 the prostitute and the John who killed him didn't know he was famous. But because he was famous, finally, that pushed the, the Thai government to clean up Bangkok. Wow. Oh, wow. So David Carradine is responsible for making Bangkok what it is today, which is a, still not a great place if you're a kidnapped child, but it is a much better place than it was, thanks to David Carradine. Now, Chuck Norris, again, said a wonderful thing about Carradine, which was he's about a good as, as good a martial artist as I am an actor. Mm. Oh. That's absolutely accurate. And so they understood each other. Mm -hmm. And again, Carradine was high all the time at that time of his life anyway. Mm -hmm. So Chuck, Chuck knew what was happening. David knew what was happening. And they just said, let's make the movie. And Chuck is professional enough to try to make David look good. So no, they didn't have a fight in any way. Okay. Sure. I, I heard that myth and I said you would know. The press wanted them to have a fight. And they may have created a fight that didn't exist because that's what they do. But no, they were fine with each other. Thank they were you. both Thank pros. You. They were both pros. Thank you. Oh, see, there's another thing. Chuck, Chuck Norris versus Bruce Lee. That's another proof of what a pro Chuck Norris was. That guy is a pro. That was one of his best fight scenes ever because look yeah. who's choreographing it. Yeah. And he's, not, and he's not on the set. Even though he's a champion martial artist, you can take it to the bank that he wasn't on the set going, oh, that's not going to work in real life. I don't want to do it that way. He's list, He's listening to his master. Right. Right. He's yes. The director and the writer. He's respecting the guy, 
And the result was an exceptional action sequence. And yeah. Chuck, you know, Chuck never quite, you know. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, I will. I will for sure. Spell my name right. Yeah, I, well, I, I, well, I have the email link address address as well. Anybody, I was going to ask a little bit about that because uh, a little while ago you we were talking back about um, about uh, you know fighters fighting the way they fight in 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 the movies, yeah. uh, being themselves, and that's one of them that came to mind was Lone Wolf, Wolf McQuaid. You know, Lone Wolf McQuaid was one of those two different styles of fighting, you know, where Chuck Norris is a kickboxer and a Tonksado fighter and, uh, and David Carradine is the Kung Fu guy, you know, the flowy Supposedly. soft style. Supposedly. Well, in the movie, in the yeah. movie he is. And it was, uh, it was interesting to, uh, to see those, those two um, go at it, to see the two different styles go at it in, in cinema. But, but I did hear this and you can clear this up for me. I don't know if this is true or not. I did hear that the reason why K David Carradine doesn't die in, in the fight that he dies off screen is due to the fact that he said that none of his characters can die at the hands of at a martial arts challenge. So instead of dying by Chuck Norris, he gets the grenade thrown in yep. and dies that way. That's to my knowledge, that's semi true. In other words, the specific reason you stated is not what the reason that I heard. The reason I heard is that he said, you know, I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to be killed on screen. Yeah. I mean, I be killed, whatever. So yeah, that was, that was his, it was probably in his contract. Yeah. You guys have that kind of contract. Right. Right. Also, you know, in terms of Lone Wolf McQuaid, <laughs> Because of all the movies I saw, I mean, if I wanted to see a karate guy versus a kung fu guy, I again would watch Heroes of the East again, mm -hmm. because, or you know, Shaolin versus Ninja, as it's called in America, because that mm -hmm. is a really exceptional karate versus kung fu and accurate and inventive and a magic fight. What the ones they had in Lone Wolf Quaid is again like. All right, yeah. For for a dead cow, it's not a bad dead cow. Yeah. But what did you think of the uh, reboot of uh, of the the Jet Li reboot of the Bruce Lee movie? Kind of, it's like a loose retelling of the story of Fist of Fury. Well, um, and, and keep in mind, Fist and Fury is not the first time that story was told, but was not by Bruce Lee. It's the story of that student. That studio, I think, Chen Zen was the name of the student. That they mm -hmm. both played. So he wasn't Jet Li per se was not doing a remake of Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee oh. was another Chen Zen movie. And so they went back to the original story and Jet Li did his version. But they both had a good reason, just like Jackie Chan in Drunken Master 2 and La Kali Young in Legendary Weapons of China. Most Kung Fu guys uh, in film, uh, we'll get to Glimmer Man in a second. Uh, most kung fu guys in film want to do a kung fu film where they capture their screen kung fu at its optimum mm. before they get too old. I talked to Jackie about this. He's going, what am I going to do now? I said, slow down. Stop trying to do the fights faster. Start trying to do the fights better. You know, you don't have to. I understand with your guys, you know, with your stuntmen. They always, they all, everybody wants to, again, prove how tough and badass they are. Right, you know, right. Just prove how smart and effective you are. Right. I mean, my, some of my favorite fights are the ones that are over in one moment because that's the most accurate fight you can do. If somebody goes to punch me, I avoid it, and I do something horrible to them. But I'm not <laughs> going to be doing that. I mean, we're taught in Kung Fu that, you know, when you, when you get into a fight, you never fight, you never start a fight. If you start a fight, something's wrong with you. If they start a fight, something's wrong with them. You can take that for as an advantage. And if they attack, you want to end the fight as quickly as you can. And you don't want to repeat. And that's why I don't even block at this point. If somebody goes to punch me, and I know they're incredibly stupid, because again, I'm not going to start the fight. So if they're going to start the fight, and if they would beat up an old bearded guy, they've got to be really stupid or drunk. And so... It, more than likely, they're going to try to punch me. I will avoid the punch and do something that I think is necessary. If they're trying to honestly hurt me, I will honestly hurt them. 
if they try to, if they just want to, you know, prove how badass they am, I'm going to prove how badass they're not, mm. <laughs> you know, and, you know, maybe trip them or humiliate them or rip open their hand. You know, there's all sorts of little things you can do. I had my, my uh, JKD teacher said that to a guy one time and it was at, it was at church actually. It was at a Bible study. It's kind of where I met him. And <laughs> another guy came up and put his arms around him and he looked at him. He goes, I'm going to embarrass you. Yeah, really. <laughs> and, and, uh, and the guy let go. Yeah. They just, they right. knew. A friend they of knew. mine is not a martial artist. But he's a good fighter. He's a barroom brawler. He's always fighting. And this guy wanted to fight him. And yeah. He fight. He wanted to go home. And so he said, look, if you really want to fight, we'll fight. But you know how this will go. You'll get some shots in. I'll get some shots in. But I'm letting you know right now, I'll be going for your eyes. And eventually I'll get them. Mm. And at that point, the other guy goes, I hear my mom calling. I got to go. Yeah. And I went, I had to, oh, that's I, a good fighter. There's a guy who's a good fighter. I, uh, I, I did an uh, actually a keto move on a guy one time, and I, I didn't know, you know how a keto is. The more force they put into it, yeah. the more it reacts yeah. to yeah. the yeah. other person. So he, so uh, you know, everybody knew I did martial arts, and I was working in a garage at the time, washing cars. It was for a, um, a, a car sales place, and I was just in the good garage place. And so they would always ask me this question: What would you do if you do this? If you do that? And this guy comes up to me, and goes, "Well, what would you do if somebody puts their arms around you?" And he put my arms in a bear hug, not under the arms, but over the arms. Right. And I don't know the name of the Aikido move, but basically you step to the side and you do, and you just kind of throw your weight this way. And I'd only done that in class. I'd never done it against somebody who really was trying to grab me. Yeah. And he came up and he grabbed me. He goes, well, what would you do if somebody did this? And I did that move, not intending to hurt him or anything, but right. just, he was grabbing so hard that the move became effective well, in that's... itself. Yeah. And he did a, a flip over me and landed on his back. And he got up, he goes, oh, I, I guess that would work. And I, yeah, you know, I walked cool. off like, yeah, of course it would. And then I was going, oh my gosh, that actually worked. Holy <laughs> smokes. So I was like, I, I was 18 at the time, you know. <laughs> so. Human physiology textbook, human psychology textbook. That's how you yeah. work self-defense. And it's, you know, my question is always, all right, yeah, I'm going to do Glimmer Man in a second. Uh, my question is always, uh, what do you want broken? Do you want your yeah. nose? Do you want your knee? Do you want your foot? Do you want your pinky? What do you want broken? Right, right. Because, you know, I don't have time to mess with this stuff. I'm an old man with a beard. Why are you beating up Santa Claus? Yeah. Little Man was not uh, Steven Seagal's best, but it was not his worst. So there what you go. What was his worst? <laughs> what well, was his worst? Uh, he's, well, his, I think his worst was the, was the two he directed. On Deadly Ground, I think it's farcically bad. I, I was going to say On Deadly Ground was my least favorite one of his. Just yeah. awful. I mean, even his, even his made-for-DVDs, his made-direct-to-DVD movies are still good. They're still right. fun. You know, he gives the audience what he thinks they want. And for the most part, he's right. You right. Know? So, yeah, uh, there's very few um, Steven Seagal movies I dislike. But mm -hmm. the two he directed are two of the worst. Yeah. Got a personal question for me, Ian C. What belt are you? Well, okay, so I do have. This is a long and complicated story. I have a. I have a long story, and I have a longer story. Um, but real simply, I. <laughs> I You're the best belt you have. I have. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, I. I had. I have lots of white belts. They're. They're my favorite belts to have. Quite honestly. Um, but the highest degree that I've ever been awarded is a third degree black belt. But there are many styles that don't have belts. And I am an instructor in uh, many of those styles. So Wing Chun doesn't really have belts, although some people try to give it belts. Not have belts. If they have belts, that's because the teacher is trying to satisfy their students. Right, right. Yeah. That's and the money and ego part. Yeah, yeah, it's hard not to. My uh, my Wing Chun teacher tr had he had shirts, but it was based on you know if you were in Sulem Tao you had a white shirt, and if you were in Chum Q you had a gray shirt, and then he but then people started calling him shirts. Oh, I'm a black shirt. I'm a white shirt, and he so he stopped that, and he said, okay, uh, if you uh, if you're in Sulem Tao I'll give you one stripe, and he just couldn't stop it because us Westerners we just kept going. 
Well, I'm a one stripe. Oh, I'm no. a two stripe. Oh, no. <laughs> I want to show people how badass I am. If I ever, if I ever give people degrees, because I don't, I never do any of that stuff. Um, I would, I, I think I'll do, um, um, I'll do the ass, I'll do the ass system. We'll, we'll start by doing that. <laughs> He'll do that. Then you'll be a fair ass. Then you'll be an okay ass. Then you'll be a a good ass. And then you'll be a very good ass. Then you'll be a badass. Then you'll be a really badass. And then you'll be dead. So that'll yeah. be All right. Uh, Any other questions? Yes. Technical oh. question here. John Collins. Mr. Myers, do you think that more on police officers should use self-defense techniques to subdue people rather than show what they can do with their ultimate dominance of lethal weaponry? Nope, I do not think so. Because in order to do self-defense, you have to know stuff. You have to be educated. And also you're in a real world situation, which is you don't know what the other person has. You don't know what the situation is. You don't know if they're mentally ill. You don't know if they're high on drugs. So if you're trying to judge all of that, and also, the highest form of kung fu is not to fight, to make your enemy a friend. That's not the goal of a police officer in a in a tough situation. Ever. So, you know, yeah. the, the odds of it going wrong, I mean, I'm not happy that a-hole cops are shooting people for no good reason. Mm -hmm. But I also understand that there are a lot of very good cops who are doing the best they can, and I want them to get home alive that night. Right, we right. We need more good cops. We don't need more bad cops. Right. Yeah, we do. So I, I can tell you from personal experience, because I know many cops, and I don't know, I, I know of some bad ones. I don't know personally any bad ones. And I want them to, and I know for a fact that they, they save a lot of situations rather than they use the proper amount of force. And more power to them. So no, yeah. I do not think, because again, the only teachers you're going to get to teach cops, teachers want to extend to get as much money as a huge majority of them, as far as I'm concerned, to get the money. Again, all, all martial arts is human body, human mind, the world around it, rest is money and ego. If yeah. somebody's doing it for a living, they want to make a living. Right, right. Yeah. They're just going to stretch it out. I yeah. can teach people how to do things in... 20 minutes. But again, you start with the physiology textbook, you start with the psychology textbook. Right, right. Everything about the human body and the human man, mind that you can, starting mm -hmm. from you, because you can't read anybody else's mind. Mm -hmm. And then you have the physiology textbook, you can find out all the places on the human body where literally all you have to do is that. Mm -hmm. and, if you're trying, I, and if you're trying not to prove how badass you are, that's what you'll do rather than to try to prove how badass you are. Right, right. Uh, I know that there are definitely in all styles people who are trying to make money. I remember when I got into Wing Chun, I actually studied with a master. His name was Ron Heinberger, and he uh, learned from, well, he had a couple different teachers, but he was always trying to Easternize things. He, he didn't like the Western mindset. He was always trying to Easternize things, but his students weren't always that way. And he said it should take you between six to nine months to get through the, the first phase. And there were there were these pair drills you did in the first phase. And I'm sure you're aware of Wing Chun. Well, we had people come in and they would be like, oh, I've been doing uh, Wing Chun for a year. And we're like, oh, well, you should be, you know, good. And they were like, no, I'm, I'm still on phase three. And we're like, what? What? You know, I mean, I, phase three was like, for months, it's like, yeah, they're stretching it out. They're making sure that you, you, you know, you're in there and you pay and you, you know. also, The more you have them do that kind of stuff, the less likely they're going to hurt themselves and hurt someone else. Yeah. yeah. Because again, it's the goal. I go to, I go to William C.C. Chen's, I used to go to William C.C. Chen's Tai Chi classes. And I would see these students in there who were trying to turn Tai Chi into something mean and aggressive and angry and badass. And it's like, all right, you know, you're not learning Tai Chi. You're learning Thai, apparently, but not Tai Chi. Okay, how can I get personal training with you guys? Because I've oh, never been to training my, myself and family. All right, just get my email. I'll send you a start. That's but awesome. I just told you 
where to start. Get yeah. the best human physiology and human psychology book you can. Also yeah. spend a lot of time reading your own mind. And 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 give me a, an email to my man. You can find it on my contact page. And uh, what I'll do for you as well is I, I will look in your area for, and I, and I will recommend the goal. Uh, well, I, I, if, if you wanted to study with me, you'd have to come to me or I'd have to come to you, but I can tell you by the list of schools in your area, which school I would go if I was there. And that's the best I can do for you. So, you know, tell me, email me and I'll point you in some good directions and email professor Rick here and he can point you in some good directions as well. And Thrash Pondo, you have any thoughts on where you should do martial? No, I'm just kidding with you. I know you're not a martial arts uh, I'm a practitioner. Not a fighter. Learn everything you can from everyone and everything you can, then make it your own. Yes. Uh, for sure. For sure. All right, my friend, we are coming up on the hour here. I have so appreciated your patience with us and taking these questions. And I so apologize for everyone if I didn't get to all your questions. We only have, you know, a limited amount of time. But I tried to get at least one question from everybody uh, who asked. Who asked. So, uh, Send the uh, questions to me. Send yeah. the questions to me. I'll answer. Okay, cool. Right on. Um, please tell everybody once again how they can contact you online. Um, Kung Fu Rick Myers at gmail.com. I'm, I have a Wikipedia page. I have a Facebook page. I have a, uh, I don't do Twitter much. I have an Instagram page and also actionfilmautopsy.com. You can listen to all my stuff. And also I have an action film autopsy page on Facebook. Mm. Find me on Facebook. Mm. And you'll, you'll recognize my face. Um, yep. Richard Myers or Rick Myers or whatever you can text me there or message me there or leave me a little note on one of my posts. Right, right, right. Okay. Well, uh, please do that. And the, actually the link to his, um, podcast is on, is in the information here. Uh, so follow that and you can get in contact with him. That's kind of the hub where you can con you can see where he is on Facebook and his Gmail and everything and so thank you very much and please don't forget to like this video subscribe to the channel share it on your favorite social media and until we meet again stay retro everyone <laughs>